What is a Spearman correlation? Spearman's rank correlation examines the relationship between two variables. Isn't that exactly what the Pearson correlation does? That's right, the Spearman rank correlation is the non parametric counterpart of the Pearson correlation. But there is an important difference between both correlation coefficients. Spearman correlation does not use the raw data, but the ranks of the data. Let's look at this with an example. We measure the reaction time of 8 computer players and ask their age. When we calculate a Pearson correlation, we simply take the two variables reaction time and age and calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. However, we now want to calculate the Spearman rank correlation. So first we assign a rank to each person for reaction time and age. The reaction time is already sorted by size. 12 is the smallest value, so gets rank 1, 15 the second smallest, so gets rank 2, and so on and so forth. We are now doing the same with age. Here we have the smallest value, there the second smallest value, the third smallest value, fourth smallest, and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at this in a scatter plot. Here we see the raw data of age and reaction time. But now we would like to use the rankings. So we form ranks from the variables age and reaction time. Through this transformation, we have now distributed the data more evenly. To calculate Spearman correlation now, we simply calculate the Pearson correlation from the ranks. So the Spearman correlation is equal to the Pearson correlation, only that the ranks are used instead of the raw values. Let's have a quick look at that in data tab. Here we have the reaction time and age, and there we have the just created ranks of the reaction time and age. Now we can either calculate the Spearman correlation of the reaction time and age, where we get a correlation of 0.9. Or we can calculate the Pearson correlation from the ranks. There we also get 0.9, so exactly the same as before. If you like, you can download the dataset you can find the link in the video description. If there are no rank ties, we can also use this equation to calculate the Spearman correlation. N is the number of cases and D is the difference in ranks between the two variables. Referring to our example, we get the different Ds with this 1 minus 1 which is 0, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, 3 minus 2 is 1 and so on. Now we square the individual d's and add them all up. So the sum of d i squared is 8. n, which is the number of people, is also 8 in this example. If we put everything in, we get a correlation coefficient of 0.9. Just like the Pearson correlation coefficient r, the Spearman correlation coefficient r s also varies between minus 1 and 1. With the help of the coefficient, we can now determine two things. Number one, how strong the correlation is. And number two, in which direction the correlation goes. The strength of the correlation can be read in a table. If we have a coefficient between minus one and less than zero, there is a negative correlation. Thus, a negative relationship between the variables. If we have a coefficient between greater than 0 and 1, there is a positive correlation, that is, a positive relationship between the two variables. If the result is 0, we have no correlation. Often, however, starting from a sample, we want to test a hypothesis about the population. We calculated the correlation coefficient from the sample data and now we can check if the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero. Thus, the null hypothesis is the correlation coefficient r is equal to zero. There is no relationship. And the alternative hypothesis is the correlation coefficient r is unequal to zero. There is a relationship. Whether the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero based on the sample collected can be checked using a t-test, where r is the correlation coefficient 
and n is the sample size. A p-value can then be calculated from the test statistic t. If the p-value is less than the specified significance level, which is usually 5%, then the null hypothesis is rejected, otherwise it is not. If we use DataDepth for the calculation of the example, we get a p-value of 0.002. The p-value is therefore smaller than 0.05 and we can therefore reject the null hypothesis that in the population the correlation coefficient is 0. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.